Hey, everyone, it's your questions with Dr. Ryan Daniel. There we go. <laughs> you know, I just actually realized this, that when I play this music, when the guest starts dancing, I'm like, all right, we're good. They're like, we're, this is going to be good. A little hype music. It's like a hype music. <laughs> I love it. it makes, I'm like, okay. Because sometimes it's like, oh, no. Oh, it's <laughs> one of those. So, hey, Dr. Ryan Daniel, I am like, I am really excited to have you on. I, this is the first time we've ever met in person, have a conversation. Um, my co-author for What Makes a Great Principal and Dr. Ryan Daniel is actually uh, one of the contributors. Allison Apsey, like thinks you are the, the coolest person in the entire world. She absolutely loves you. So I'm like, and if Allison loves you, I love you without even meeting you. Cause I know Allison, you know, she's incredible. And she, she speaks very, very highly of you. So I'm very honored for you to be here today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Hey, friends. Yeah, and Doctor. So I don't know if I don't know if I should say this. I might get you in trouble. So Doctor Daniel is actually a school principal. <laughs> she's she's doing this on her lunch. Let's just say that, okay? Right? Yeah. Can we say yeah. that? Yeah. We're doing, doing it on lunch, and she's like, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of keep it like short and succinct, which I think my audience always appreciates because uh, she might be getting phone calls during this. She already has. So let's let's go. But. I, before I get into the three questions, and uh, Dr. Daniel actually wrote from the principal perspective, and in every uh, pillar that we shared, we actually had one principal, and then either a teacher and a student, two of those stories, so you can actually hear from people who have done the job and people who have benefited from amazing principals over their time. Before I get into the three questions, though, um, can you tell a little bit about your chapter, what you talked about, and just like kind of give like a, you know, a 60 second summary of what you wrote about and what makes a great principal. Absolutely. Um, so my chapter chapter uh, was focused on talent cultivating. And I think that is the number one skill that a school leader, an effective school leader, a school principal needs to have. Like you have to be able to cultivate talent in everyone around you. And if you can't cultivate anybody's talent, can't make anybody better, then what are you doing? Right. Um, so in, in, in my section, in my chapter, you know, I really talked about a relationship with um, a teacher leader during my first year as a principal that did not start off as great as I had wanted it to and hoped for it to be. Yeah. But um, just the strategies and leadership behaviors and moves that I put in place to um, build her capacity, but then also strengthen myself as a school leader. Um, so I just was really excited to reflect and go back to that moment of um, my first year principal self and how important it is for school principals to make as many kind of deposits yeah. into teacher leaders as they make withdrawals from them. You know, you know, what's funny is that, so I've been asking this question, like what's, um, tell me about a great administrator you've had. And I've been asking this for a couple of years on this specific podcast. And the theme that comes out, and you said this is the number one thing, is they'll say like, they saw something in me that I, I didn't. It's like all of the time, that is one of the biggest things. And that's something, you know, I, I have benefited from principles like that. Um, but I've also had principles that no matter what I did, it, it didn't matter, it right? It doesn't matter. And, th and those are the ones, you know, I wanted to get away from, uh, you know, in my career. So I, I do appreciate how much you did that for other people. And we, we both know this from, you know, you currently being the role me and um, that teachers look to other teachers for leadership. Like if you think if the principal is solely responsible for all the leadership in the school, the school is doomed, right? You are in trouble. Like it's actually really empowering, you know, educators to lead too, because they have a ton of influence with their colleagues and it is actually utilizing those people not only to you know help move the vision forward but also learn from them as well and i think you did a, a beautiful job uh, of that so i know that you talked about this idea of uh cultivating talent and you know like great leaders great teachers do the exact same thing so when you think about a teacher you know whether it was a student maybe someone you worked with um who's a great teacher you think of and and why um, I think the teacher that I think of the most is going to trip you out. But it's my kindergarten teacher. Um, it is my kindergarten teacher, Ms. Jones, who actually ended up being a substitute teacher for me when I became a teacher. 
and then is now one of my long-term subs that comes into the building and wherever I go she is there too and I just remember Miss Jones because Miss Jones was very um she was very keen on relationships like building relationships with not only us as five-year-olds but our parents and understanding you know um like where we came from, our backgrounds and making connections. And I I think that stayed with me so much, the importance of in education relationship building, making connections with students, with families. And she has so much care and empathy and compassion. And like, she really loved her job. Like I, I, I didn't know that teachers love their job when, you know, when you're a child, but she like really loved being a teacher and, I've I've always like circled back to man my kindergarten teacher and they're like you can't remember that far back but like no she had that much of a impact and you said the word or a second ago influence mm -hmm. influence over me that even now you know year eighteen in education eighth year as a principal like I still remember Miss Jones and the impact that she has had on uh, my life even back in kindergarten we got Miss Jones <laughs> not only that. That, that air horn that's for kindergarten teachers you know i was thinking about this as you're talking kindergarten teachers seem to remember every kid they've ever taught <laughs> it's like every kid. uncanny every kid. no like let me very quick 10 seconds so i was i was <laughs> i was teaching fifth grade yeah. and this this the, she was walking around the building she looked at me she said you look familiar and i was like you do too <laughs> so you know we go down to the church grandma and she said, mm -mm. she said, where'd you go to school? And I said, to school. She's, and I said, Ms. Jones, she said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and it just, it just was a moment. It, it, it was a moment. And then full circle moment, she substituted my daughter's kindergarten class oh, years ago. And I said, oh, my. and she came back. She said, she's just like you. She's just like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, like my kindergarten teacher, I wrote about her. And she, she responded, she, I didn't even know she connected with me anywhere. She responded to what I wrote. I was like, she remembers me and like, she's heard this. So I, I love this. I hope, I hope Miss Jones hears, hears this as well. So, um, one of the things that we are really cognizant of is really the, the principles that, you know, either were currently in the position or formerly in the position were amazing. And like I said, Allison says, you're like one of the best, like I, unbelievable. And so. I know that as a principal, uh, if you're going to be really good, you've had to have a good one somewhere along the way, right? Or a, a really great leader. So when you think of a, a great leader, other than yourself, who's someone that, and I, you, you know, you probably don't like, I'm the best. <laughs> I should have said <laughs> that. But uh, who do you think of when you think of like a great principal or great, great assistant principal that you had in your past and why? Um, I, I would go back to my high school principal, Miss Chisholm, because... Um, what she gave us was opportunities. Mm -hmm. What I saw, what I remember is my 12th grade year, I had a half a day schedule and I, she knew I wanted to be an educator. And I asked her um, if I could do my half day kind of internship in the front office, like be her kind oh. of student intern. And they've never done that. And um, she said, well, like, what would that look like? And I remember her teaching me about, like, student leadership. And I got to firsthand see the workings of, like, the principal in the front office and the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And that stayed with me because if I think and reflect on me now as a teacher leader, um, I, and as a principal, like, I include my students and voices into everything. Like, you know, we right now we're in budget season for next school year. I have budget meetings with my students, right? I ask them, like, how do you think we should spend the money next year? Because ultimately, it's for them. Right. You know, they do the announcements, but it's more than just that. Like, we had the um, Secretary Cadona, um, United States Secretary of Education, come visit our school last year. And... I had our social media team of students walking around with him with, you know, cool. their iPads and cameras. And I just go back to Ms. Chisholm showed me how important it was to empower students um, to find whatever their niche and gift is yeah. and like use that for the betterment of the school.
I love that. <laughs> Shout out. You know, what's interesting, that talent cultivator piece that you wrote about, part of it is letting people that come to you with these ideas that was like done for yourself and letting them run with it, even if it's never been done before. Yeah. Right. And then they're there, you know, you think about how you did that, how you empower your students to do that. When people have a certain ownership over the school, the school is so much better. Absolutely. And you, you know, like even like even just kind of some of the connections that we saw, we had like a student, uh, um, like an IT team and we had issues with, you know, computers being destroyed and, you know, vandalized. But as soon as we had the students in there that were fixing it, it went down significantly because you're sitting by your buddy who has to fix it. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so it's like, Hey, like if you pop those keys out, I got to fix it. So just quit doing that. And it was just, you know, things were way better. So I actually, I'm going to change this last question for you a little bit. Um, because typically I ask like, you know, if you go back to your first year of teaching, um, what advice you give yourself, but because you kind of mentioned it in the podcast, but also before, um, you, you talked about like really kind of going back to when you first became an administrator and, you know, some of the things that you learned, it was kind of neat writing about it and like revisiting where you were at that time. So if you can go to your like first year, um, as an administrator, cause I, I know you wrote about being an assistant principal. And we're hoping that assistant principals pick up this book because I think it'll be, you know, really, really powerful. It's not just for people in the position right now, but those who are in it and aspiring to, what would you advice would you give to your yourself in that first year as a school administrator? Um, I think the advice that I would give myself my first year is that it is okay to make mistakes. Like it, I, I stay in a place of, you know, got to get it right. Perfectionist, very hard on myself. And you thought you knew the work of what your principal did until you actually became the principal <laughs> and you realize that you can't pass it up to somebody else. Like <laughs> the parent still wants to talk to you. You are the one that's responsible. You know, you're in control of everything that you don't have control over. And I, I think that the biggest advice that like it is okay to make mistakes, like giving yourself grace mm -hmm. in it um, because I almost burnt out the first year. Mm. And I remember a mentor coming one day to the my building to see me and he walked in and I had my piece of paper ready because I just knew he was I, I was either getting in trouble for something or I was there was something new that I needed to do. And he said, no, I'm just here to check on you. I said, me? He said, How are you? I was like, am I going to get in trouble if I answer this, you know, honestly? And he's like, no, how are you? Because I don't want you to burn yourself out right. so early in your career. And um, so I think it, I would just remind myself to remember the person, like the, 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 the person Ryan before the principal, um, because a lot of times, you know, we forget as principals, it, like we will make mistakes. Like we are not going to get it all right. We're not going to have all of the answers for everyone. And, and so like taking away that need to um, say you'll fix it, say, you know, the answers, say that you're going to handle it and giving yourself the room of, you don't know right now. So like, take some time to figure out the answer. You know, it is really amazing that that was your answer. Like I'm, I'm a little blown away. I'm not gonna lie to you because I know how many people look up to you and see this. And a lot of times what they do is they see where you are right now, but they're like, well, you just, every, <laughs> everything worked out. It was just all awesome. It's the but highlight room. They see the highlight room. It's, it's ESPN, right? Like it's, it's, it's sports center. And so, I think that is so encouraging to people because I know that when you get into that, like when you, when I became a principal, I just thought like the principal was all knowing they, they knew everything. I was always a person you go to. And then I was like, Oh my God, I don't know all this stuff. And then you're like, Oh, they didn't know everything, but there's that perception of it too. So I, I know that's so encouraging. So Dr. Daniel it is amazing to meet you. Uh, you have, surpass everything Alice said, said about you too, which, you know, makes it even better. So I'm so excited that, um, your work is going to get out there. And I know, I, I know this is a chapter. I know there's a book coming. I know there's a book coming too. So we're, we're waiting for that one as well, but Dr. Daniel, uh, make sure everyone follow, uh, Dr. Daniel, all the socials are down below, but thank you so much for your time. I can't wait to talk to you more uh, in the next episode. Thanks.